I can't wait to share some things that I, the Lord put on my heart to do, man. We're, I haven't had a day off since this pandemic hit, and, and I'm just loving every minute of it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, because the Lord's given me ideas to reach more and more people. And y'all get ready because I need your support. I need your help. And I want to give a big shout out to Summit Nation. I, I really appreciate. I know that y'all are praying for me. And, and, and keep praying because I'm getting, I'm getting light. I'm getting insight. The Lord is positioning us for something really big. And when you see mess happening, when you see evil happening in the world, look and see what God is doing. God doesn't react to the devil. It's the opposite, actually. The devil reacts to something he sensed God is doing. Like when Moses was born, okay, Herod's, Herod's, uh, um, or the Pharaoh was trying to kill all those, all those babies. See, it, it, it wasn't Pharaoh. It was the spirit again. It, behind it, the enemy sensed something. He don't know exactly what God is doing, but he can sense when, when something's about to break. And so he's trying to snuff out Moses. The devil doesn't know everything. He didn't even know who he was. That's why he had to <laughs> just kill them all. Think about when Jesus was born. Same thing. See, it's the devil reacting with, with, with Moses. It was, it, was, it was the devil reacting, trying to stop what he sensed God was doing. Same thing when Jesus was born. The enemy was trying to stop. He sensed something was happening in the spirit. Because, see, the devil is a spirit, like God is a spirit. He's not God's equal. He don't know exactly what God is doing. But he can sense some, some activity in the spirit. So he tried to, he, he sensed something was going on. So he, uh, he stirred up Herod to kill all those male children, two years old and under. So what am I saying to you? I don't know where this message is going today, but uh, some good stuff here. Thank you, Lord. God is doing something in the earth today. Something is on the horizon that the enemy, all this stuff that he's doing, these murders and stuff, it's because God is sensing, uh, excuse me, the devil is sensing something that God is doing. So what I want to, to do as a pastor is be, be in tune to what, what is the Lord saying to me? What, what should we be doing as a church to get ready for what, God, what, what do you want us to do? We may not know, know everything that's going on. Like, we, we didn't know about this coronavirus. Who knew that? God knew it. He had us set up. We have thousands of dollars put into equipment. And we just did an upgrade. But God prepared us years ago, even though we didn't know th about the pandemic, God knew. And he prepared us for, for us a while back. I thought we were getting some, some stuff to, so we could make some uh, CDs, recording equipment, while we got the, mic, the, the, the drums and the equipment, the keyboards and the horn. We've got mics on all of them. Thank you, Jesus. So we can be online and do a, a new way of ministering to people. It, I know there's, there's nothing that takes place of physically getting together. I miss people. We've got a few more people here today. And it's just, it's, I mean, I miss seeing people in person, seeing their smiling face, man. Praise God. I'm just, I just love my family. I'm a people person. I love being around people. I don't like to be cooped up in the house, even though I'm cooped up in the house most of the time. That's why I can't hardly leave the church on Sunday because I just like, I'm always usually the last person to leave. I'm trying to correct that, but it's just in me. I just like being around folks. Amen. Uh, I love what I do. And so with that, let me share a few things with you and then we'll get out of here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
I love you, Summit family. I, I speak on behalf of, of, of Carla. We love y'all so much. And we are praying for you. You're in our hearts. And uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, let me jump over here. To, let's, let's begin in Hebrews chapter 7. You know, in, in the Old Covenant, God dealt with the people that is uh, based on the high priest. In other words, even if, the, if Israel's behavior was bad, if the high priest was good, the people were good. But if the high priest was bad, the people were in trouble. <laughs> But God, God dealt with the people based on the high priest. Even if their behavior was bad, if the high priest was good, they were good. Well, guess what? Our high priest today in the new covenant is Jesus. And see, they had many high priests in the Old Testament because they, they died and somebody else had to take their place. But we have a high priest that ever lives, that will never die. And he's good. And since our high priest is good, guess what? You all good. Even if your behavior is bad, your high priest is good, you're good. So we're going to begin in uh, Hebrews chapter 7. Man, I tell you. After we say this confession. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Say it with me. I am greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved by you. I am the disciple who Jesus loves. I am my father's favorite child. I am the apple of his eye. I am well pleasing in his sight. I receive the love that my father has for me. Stop. Stop, stop. Why do we say these things? Philemon says that the communication of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ. These are things that are in you. You are special. You are valuable, you are precious, you're accepted and, and, and approved. These things are true about you. Because as Jesus is, as the high priest is, so are we. Where is our high priest? Seated. Do you know, you? what if you really believe you're far above danger? I mean, believe it. I mean... What's the point of, 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 of confessing and praying Psalm 91 if we don't believe it? It don't make no difference if you, if you don't believe it. It, don't, it doesn't matter. We're just, we just wasting time. We might well just go be scared like everybody else. I believe this stuff. Or else I'm packing my bags up. And go and go uh, join people being scared. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be scared. I mean, if somebody shot me down in the, if a police shot me down in the street, and if I could, if you, if y'all raise me from the dead, I'm gonna come back up here and preach the same thing. And if I and if I if I don't get raised from the dead and I go up in the glory, I say, well, what happened to the Pastor? He believed all that stuff. Like, Somebody else get him get in my place and preach the same thing. Right. Well, I know somebody believed like that, and they they got shot. Listen, never bring the word down to the level of human experience. It don't make no difference what, what happened to somebody. 
We're not happy that bad stuff, bad stuff is happening, but it doesn't change the word. I mean, the worst thing that's happened, you go be with Jesus. We win no matter what. So let's be bold and preach what the word says. Don't, don't, don't look at somebody else. <coughs> don't bring the word down to the level of human experience. The word, people say, well, the, you know, the Bible says it. I believe it, and that settles it. No, the Bible says it. That settles it. Whether you believe it or not, the word is forever settled in heaven. Your healing is forever settled. Your protection against danger is forever settled. It's a done deal. Now, all you got to do is believe it. I was driving a BMW 7 Series in Lafayette, Indiana. I got pulled over by the police. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't understand the gospel of grace at that time, but I knew that God watched over me. And um, I got pulled over because my plates was expired or whatever. I didn't know it. They actually did me a favor. But... Um, See, when, when you're at peace, so I was at peace. In the midst of that situation, I was at peace. <coughs> I did what they asked me to do. And it, this is something just common sense. I don't argue with folk with guns. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't make any sense. So, and again, he didn't do nothing to me. Actually, did me a favor because I had to keep on driving when I expired place. I'm in a you know a place outside of my town. Guess what happened? Because I trust God to take care of me. I'm not. I'm not I wasn't afraid of these people. They made a call. And they called Fort Wayne, and you know they called dispatch to check it out. You know who answered the phone? Mark Roseman. What's the chances of that? Wow. Now, Mark Rose was a member of a summit church. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Rose was good, I'm good. Right. <laughs> and Mark Rose said, I'm good, I'm good. So, and police officer came back, and he was pleasant the whole time. I told him, just get that taken care of. You know, I talked to somebody, you know, he knows you. And, uh, you know, go ahead and take care of it as soon as you can. You know, have a wonderful day. You know, went on about my business. And actually, the whole time my son was in a car because car, I was taking him for a golf tournament. And I, while this was going on, I just took the opportunity, because we pulled over into McDonald's, I took the opportunity because he probably was hungry. I said, man, um, he didn't know. He just, I said, man, go on in, in McDonald's, you know, and, and grab you something and then uh, come on back out. You know, he went on and got him something to eat while I was taking care of that. And that was the end of that. Thank you, Jesus. And it's because, it, it, it's not because, I was going to say, it is because I'm special. I'm the disciple who Jesus loves. <laughs> See, you're God's favorite child. Tell the person next to you, God, God loves you. But I'm, his, but I'm his favorite. <laughs> you know when God is honored, when his name is being lifted up. We're lifting him up today. We're bragging about Jesus. Not making light of situations. We're making much of Jesus. The cross actually did something. The cross, see, think about it. When you listen to people talk, you find out what they really believe. Okay? When you squeeze something like a sponge, what, what's in them is going to come out. And there's so many, my, my heart breaks that there's so many believers that live as though Jesus never went to the cross. 
I wonder, I'd like to ask somebody, they'll say, well, you got to do more than pray, and y'all just, y'all Christians just praying. What, what does the finished work of the cross mean to you? What does Psalm 91 say? What does God say about your protection? I, I wonder what, what do people really believe? And they really, a lot of people just really, and no disrespect, a lot of people just don't understand what happened on, I understand what happened on the cross. Jesus died on the cross, but it's more than that. No, yes, it is more than that. The things that Hebrew says accompany salvation. See, you, you got to get the, uh, the finished work, the grace of, of Jesus Christ to understand it, God's unearned, unmerited favor. You got to get it by revelation. Let's go back to our confession. <laughs> I'm the disciple who Jesus loves. I, I'm fa my father's favorite <laughs> child. <Sorry, y 'all. laughs> okay. I am my father's favorite child. I am the apple of his eye. I am well pleasing in his sight. I receive the love that my father has for me. Everything I do and touch shall be blessed because I am the beloved. I am loved, <laughs> righteous, blessed, prosperous, redeemed, forgiven, talented, creative, confident, secure, disciplined, focused, prepared, qualified, motivated, valuable, free, 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 free oh, excuse me, determined, equipped, empowered, anointed, Accepted and approved, not average, not mediocre, holy, flawless, without blemish, blameless, and free from accusation. I am a child of the Most High God. I will become all I was created to be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, Hebrews chapter 7. The high priest is good. Jesus is good. I'm good. As Jesus is, so am I. Jesus is seated. I'm seated. Jesus has risen. You've been risen. Thank you, Lord. Watch this. The former priests, first 20, uh, Hebrews 7. Uh, got a, slides are not behaving for me, but okay. Thank you, Lord. Let me go. The former, former priests were many in number because they were pre prevented by death from continuing in office. That's what I shared earlier. I mean, you had many high priests in the old covenant. But he, referring to Jesus, watch this, holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Who's your high priest? Jesus. Watch this. Consequently, why? Because he lives forever. He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Think about this. Inter intercession, that's somebody is like a go-between between one person and another person. Jesus is at the Father's right hand making intercession for us. Watch this. Man, you're going to love this. Sometimes we don't pray prayers 100% correctly. But, but watch this. Because, you know, sometimes we can pray from the wrong motive. Sometimes we can pray, somebody ask us to pray for their marriage and the husband give us one side, but then there's another side, is the wife's side. And sometimes we can have incomplete information when we pray. Sometimes we pray with, with, with bad intentions. Sometimes you can pray out of anger. But watch this. We have a high priest that, that, that he makes intercession for us. So our prayers go through a high priest, and what our high priest does is like it, 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 he adds, Jesus adds his perfume, his, his incense, 
his perfection to our, our prayer and make sure that our, and make our prayers perfect before they go to the Father. He makes sure that our prayers hit the mark 100%. So even when we pray, sometimes you, you may not have the words. Remember, I talked about prayer being communication with God, talking to God face to face, communion with him, fellowship with him. You talking to him, he talking back to you. See, don't just do all the talking in prayer. See? Have little conversations with God. I have quiet time in the morning. But then I like to have little conversations with him through the day. And just stay in, in communion with him. Because he never leaves you or forsake you. Thank you, Jesus. See, think about this. When your, your prayers pass through your high priest, who is Jesus, and he takes your prayers as his incense to it and presents to the Father a perfect prayer on your behalf, even when your prayers aren't 100% right. He clean up your prayer. He makes sure your prayer hit the mark. Isn't that good news? Thank you, Jesus. So, so don't, don't, don't think that you've got to have your words all perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Does that help you? First John chapter 5. We're talking about prayer, prayer in the new covenant. I want to uncomplicate things for you. And like I said last week, there, sometimes you see people praying, and you say, man, you know, I wish I could pray like that. But God said, all shall know me from the least to the greatest. In this new covenant, just uh, a, the, the, a groan will be heard. A groan will reach the throne. God will hear a whisper. Huh? You, you heard this term? Man, we, we just gonna, we're just going to bombard heaven. You know what bomb? I looked up the word bombard. It means to um, attack. We don't have to attack heaven. Heaven's open. You heard that, Michelle? Think we're going to bombard heaven. What are you going to bombard? Heaven's open. And <laughs> we're living under open heaven where Jesus is our intercessor, man. Do you see that? He always lives. Before we go to first John, look, he always lives to make intercession for you. Jesus is for you. Yeah. Right? Because if God is for us, who can be against us? Say, Jesus is for me. He's for you when you're out there in those streets. See, when you commune with him, I remember one time they're trying to throw, throw Jesus off, off the cliff. He walked right through the midst of them. They couldn't touch him. No evil could touch him. Only time they could touch him when he let them. Pilate got the nerve to talk about, you know, I got the power to crucify you and power to release you. Jesus like, dude, you ain't got no power at all except it, unless it was given to you from heaven. He said in one place, he said, I got power to, I, I've got to, listen, I got the power to lay my life down and take it back again. <laughs> Jesus was, I mean, he was a man's man. I mean, Ain't going to mess with me until I let you mess with me. No man takes my life. He said, nobody takes my life. Glory to God. Peter, put your sword up. He said one place. Man, don't you know, man, I can call for 12 legions of angels. You know, there's 6,000 in a legion. That's 72,000 angels. He said, I can call right now for 72,000 angels. See what that sword gonna do, man. <laughs> Come on, I got a job to do, man. Just leave it alone. 
Peter cut that man's ear off. He took his ear. He healed the man. He put it, uh, Malchus, I think it was. Put it, and he wouldn't have healed the man. <clears throat> the man had come to apprehend him. Why not God operated in so much love? Man, when, 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 when you got love, you got compassion. So you operate differently. It doesn't make you weak. See, sometimes people think love makes you weak. Jesus, Jesus when those situations I described to you and how Jesus, and what, what he said and, and how he acted, they didn't make him weak. Stephen, when he was stoned, took an example from Jesus. He, he said, Lord, don't, don't, when they stoned him. See, that's not a natural love. See, we're not natural people. The devil will try to, see, he's really tricky. He'll try to get you to operate in the natural. Try to get you in the, once he gets you in the natural, he got you where, where you know, where, where he can mess with you. And when you start, oh, I'm just afraid. The thing that you greatly fear can come upon you. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. See, that can happen to you. That can happen to you. See, so you got to know the difference between the voice of, of, of the Lord and the voice of the enemy. You got to filter things through the finished work. Does it line up with the finished work? Fear don't line up with the finished work. Even when they, they stoned Stephen, he said, Lord, don't lay this sin against him. Jesus said, forgive them. They don't even know what they, they, don't, they know not what they do. Whew. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I, I just, thank you, Lord. I didn't plan to say a lot of this stuff here, but you know what? Y'all pray for me, don't you? Yes. Amen. I I feel help up here. Yes. I do. I mean, I, I, man, I, I believe I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. God is leading me today. Thank you, Jesus. We got a high priest that makes our prayer good before the Father. So just pour, when you pray, just pour your heart out to the Lord. Don't be concerned about getting all your words perfect or trying to emulate somebody else's prayer. Pray like somebody else. Pray the way you pray. Just pray the way you pray. Just tell the Lord how you feel. If you're frustrated, just tell the Lord I'm frustrated. He know anyway. Everything is naked and open before him. I mean, there's nothing you can hide. He says, Lord, help me right here. I'm on the job. I got these people are coming against me on, this, on my job. I don't know why, Lord. I just, I, I just cast all, all this up on you, Lord. And I, I pray for them. They don't know what they're doing. So you're operating in a different spirit. It takes a different spirit to love your enemies. Come on. Come, so don't talk to me about love. My, that's what Jesus said. He said, love your enemies. You can't do it in the natural. You can't love your, look, you can't love your enemy. What do you want to do? When somebody come against you, you want to render evil for evil. That's the way the world operates. Man, years ago, y'all don't know me. You think y'all know me. Y'all don't know me, man. But before I knew Jesus, man, I tell you what. There's a time I would have been out there in them streets with a rock trying to tear up some stuff. But Jesus actually changed my life. So, I, I mean, I, I understand when you don't have hope and you're just trying to do something. I mean, my heart goes out to anybody on the street causing destruction and things like that. I mean, I, I, I want to reach them with the gospel. I've always been good with people who... Um, I, I said, some people think this is maybe a negative, but it's a positive. Jesus was called a friend of sinners. I got somebody tell me, he said, uh, Al, hang out with a sinner like me. 
and we get along just good. He told his 90-year-old dad, he said, I said, he said, Al Jennings, he said, I, um, I hang out with this preacher. His dad said, did you tell him you're a sinner? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I told him. He said, he specialized in sinners. <laughs> but see, I think people ought to be comfortable around us. Amen. Jesus was called a friend of sinners because he related to people. I've been in the presence one time of a, of a pimp, and they had a stack of money on the table. But that pimp loved me when he was in the hospital. I forget how we even got connected, but when uh, I went and prayed for him, and he got healed. Ever since then, anything went down, he called for me. And he didn't really trust preachers because some of them preachers, you know, would be running the streets with him. <laughs> so, but he respected me. And I was, was um, I'm a young man now, but I was younger, even younger then. And uh, <laughs> going there with a stack of money on the table, preach the gospel. I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm finished, but we we preached the gospel. Me and uh, a friend of mine, we went in there. We preached the gospel. Uh, Carl Underwood. We we went in there and we preached, and uh, I mean, talk from Adam to Jesus. And the one guy who was count, who he had, he's standing by the money, he got upset. Pimp was over there. He was over there just kind of cool. And his, his, his boy, one of his boys said, oh, you know, all that religion and all these, got all these different denominations and everybody believed different stuff. It's like, we got to see this money here. We can all, everybody can count it and all come out the same. He said, but this religion, everybody got different opinions about this, that, nothing. And, and the pimp said, man, be quiet. Just listen. We shut the man up, you know. And we went on preaching the gospel, man. And he, and he listened. And they, they didn't receive at that, at that time, but the fact is that, that, that they were comfortable. People should be comfortable around you. We shouldn't act, we shouldn't be weird. Okay? And uh, I'm not saying you're weird. I'm just saying, you know, there are a lot of Christians that just act religious and yas. You believe in Jesus? Yas. <laughs> they got, you know, they can't say yes regular, normal, in church. Yas. Hallelujah. Just stuff like that. Um, but see, some plant, sometimes people won't receive the gospel when you give it to them, but some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. But, but see, I, I'm excited about these evangelism um, sessions that we're going to do. I'm not even going to lead it. I, 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 he's better than me in that. He's got a gift I, I don't, Jeff's got a gift I don't have. And, and uh, we, we're going to get these things uh, this started. He's going to show you how easy it is to minister to people and just being aware not, not having some kind of plan thing like, okay, if they say, say this, then we, you say that. And then we're going we're gonna to assume we, this is how we're going to preach to them. We're going to do this, this, this. Sometimes it's not even sharing the scripture. Sometimes it's not even mentioning Jesus' name at first. Sometimes it's just ministering to their need. Sometimes it's just praying for them. But what's the key? Now, I'm, I'm just sharing with you a little bit. Jeff knows more about this than I do. But when he was sharing a little bit with me, I could resonate with it because I know, I said, this is, this is the way evangelism should be done under grace. It comes out of your devotional time. 
spending time with the Lord, spending time in prayer, letting him talk to you, you talk to him, having conversations with God, and then let him lead people to you and, and just in your everyday life and God will bring there's so many people hurting. If, if you have a desire to reach people, God will bring people across your path. And, then, and when he does, you, you listen to the Holy Spirit. Man, I, I just heard a couple of incidents with Summit Nation this week. Um, somebody, uh, Fifi, was talking about yesterday to some, somebody that, that was in her um, in, in a salon and, and she began to minister, but, but gave her a on time word, something that you see you can't script it. The Holy Spirit knows what they need. When you're in tune, and you, you'll operate under the gifts of the Spirit unconsciously and you're not being all religious thus saith the Lord God and you know disturb everybody in the salon you can just have a normal conversation with somebody and operate in the gifts of the spirit without theatrics I mean you don't, you don't got to do that in Kroger's just do what the Lord tells you to do. Because some of that stuff is just, it spooks people. Another incident. Somebody, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this. I, I don't know if Gary wanted me to post it, but you, uh, Pastor Gary, you better stop me because I'm going I'm to post it. It's so good. This guy was uh, somebody, I think, I may have had the story wrong, but I think somebody gave Somebody might misinterpret it, and that's why I didn't post it. Um, but I'll, I'll post it on our community page so y'all can don't judge Gary for this, okay? Uh, even, like some people may not have heard the story. Like, what's he doing with a cigar? Okay, well, just leave it alone. Don't judge Gary. He just likes smoking cigars. No, he doesn't. I'm just kidding. He had, I think somebody had given him a cigar. And then he took the cigar, and, and the Lord told him, now see, you can't script this. He passed this guy, and he was maybe, I think, saying some profanity maybe. And he took the cigar. The Lord told him, he passed, and the guy passed, passed him. And uh, see, Gary, Gary White. You already know that, but for people that don't know that, and this guy was black, young, young black guy. The Lord told him to give the cigar to that man. I got it on my phone. Told him to give the cigar to the man. Not behavior modification, transformation. Gary didn't know nothing about this guy's life, but he was hurting, and he, he said he needed the conversation. Gave him the cigar, and then the Lord told him to minister to him, he ministered salvation to, the, to this guy. This guy got saved, and he got on video talking about it, how he needed that. See, that's the church being the church. He was doing what the, what the Lord told him to do. My, I mean, I can go on and on. My, my brother-in-law, you, you got something? Okay, I'm, I'm going to have you come up in a minute. So uh, my uh, brother-in-law, who he's with Jesus right now, and he got saved I mean, he saw Bo Rahim. He would come in here when he come in. He lived in Hawaii for a while. He had a rough life. And Bo Rahim would come in. Whenever he come, he come. Service, I don't care what's happening in the service. He would come right up the center aisle and come right up to the front and hug, you know, just like, like, you know, like he at home. He had a rag around his head and all, all like this. And every time he called from Hawaii, sometimes he don't understand the time difference. He knew it, but he would call. be 3 o'clock in the morning. What y'all doing? And. And so, and he would always say, uh, assalamu alaikum, and all because he called himself a Muslim and all this kind of stuff. And uh, Carla would, would just be sweet to him, be kind to him all the time. He loved Carla. And, uh, and so, but he would always be talking about white people this and white people that, white people this. And he just thought the white people were the devil, you know. <laughs> and uh, at the time, he came, and, and, and long story short, he came to Summit, 
One time he was in town. He gave his life to the Lord. And who went to minister to him? As we followed up with him? A white man, Wes Jackson. <laughs> but wait a minute. One minute, this is why I know what the gospel will do to people. Not behavior modification. Transformation. Man, you couldn't say nothing bad about Wes to him. He loved Wes, and he talked about how this man, this white man, came and ministered to him. And he said, like, he had a whole, he, he, he just changed. Only the gospel can do that. You can't make this stuff up. And people know when you love them and when you fake. I really want people, people to change. And I know how it takes place. It's through the, I see the gospel can do it. You cannot modify somebody's behavior. You need transformation, and that can only happen through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Rama, South Africa. I can go on and on. Rama, South Africa. The school I went to, Rama, Pastor Ray McCauley back in the day, pastor of a big church what, under apartheid back before Mandela had this church ministered to the whole jo jo Johannesburg. They had thousands of people, white, black, you know, they got Afrikaans, they got all different classes of black folks over there. So, and, and, but the, and, and under apartheid. And people worshiping God and loving one another. And the government came to the church. It's like, how do you do it? And the pastor said, you cannot change a person. Basically, can't change their behavior. You've got to change a person's heart. When a person's heart's change, they love one another. And you know when Nelson Mandela, when they had those elections, when he got elected, you know the government came and asked the members of that church to oversee the election. So that it would be done fairly. They trusted that church because of who they were. Now that's change. Love it. Thank you. Never know who you're talking to. And I say that because of this. I had a situation that happened. I don't know if anybody's ever seen me in my car. But hey, Trace, come, come up here on the, on the stage for a second. If anybody's ever seen me in my car. You can't see. You guys, you guys, you all blacked out. Yeah, but that, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times you can see a lot of motion, though. But in my car, when I'm in the car, and if I'm listening to music, then I'm into it. I was always a, I was always a dancer. And so when I'm listening to my music in the car, my head's going one way, I'm rocking, I'm doing all the stuff that you see other folk do that you may not even know they say. And so I was doing this and I had my windows down because it was a warmer day, and it wasn't hot, just a nice breeze. So I let my windows down. So this guy pulls up next to me in a van. And I'm not going to say this to talk about this guy because he really thought he was doing the right thing. Because religion taught him that's what you're supposed to do. Talk about evangelism. And I'm riding and I'm rocking. And he rolls his window down. And I see him say something, but I have my music turned up, so I really don't hear him. So I turn my music down. <laughs> and he says, you think Jesus would like that? Wow. And I looked at him and I said, what? <laughs> he said, and he pulls out this card that has a cross on it. And he says, you think Jesus would like that? And I looked back at him. And I said, as a matter of fact, I think he does. And he said, you ought to repent. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, but the light's changing. I'm like, wait a minute. 
Because my question for him was, do you know what the word repent means? It means to change your mind. It's not a religious term. It means to change your mind. Mm -hmm. And so, as you're ministering to people, you don't know what somebody is going no, through or no, where they come right. from. I got a degree in theology. I got it right through here, through some of church. So, I know what the word says. I've been taught 30 years by a man who has taught me what the word says. And when he thought or when he found out that what he was saying was not exactly correct, he loved us enough to make a change. And the change started from the top. I said all that to say this again. The dude thought he was doing the right thing. It's not about him. It's about us. Mm -hmm. Leave folk alone. Yes, that's right. Because you don't know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. You have no idea who that person is that you think that you're giving instruction to. All God wants us to do is love them. Love the people. Not say you got to do this, you got to do that, you shouldn't be doing this, you, should, you need to repent. No, what you need to do is be quiet mm. <laughs> and listen to what God is telling you to do. Thank you, Lord. Because if you had listened to God, you'd have never said that to me. That's right. That's right. That's just the you truth. Something. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Amen. Every head about every hot clothes. Amen. That's good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. There may be those out there today who's watching online that need a, need a transformation. Maybe people out there that's confused, that's con concerning the events that's going on in our, in our world, in our nation. But Father, they see now that they need help. And they don't know where to turn. If that's you, you don't know where to turn. You don't know. You're looking for answers. You're looking for solutions. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus is the answer. No matter what the problem is, the answer is Jesus. That's not an oversimplification. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Jesus is the power of God. There is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, which means deliverance, preservation of your life, safety and healing and soundness and prosperity. The gospel is. This good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God's unearned, undeserved, unmerited favor is the power for your salvation, your deliverance, your preservation, your healing, your safety, your soundness, and your prosperity. And the Bible goes on to say that in it, in the gospel, righteousness is revealed. What is righteousness? Right standing with God. It's revealed through this good news. What, what, what is this good news of righteousness? That you are righteous by faith, not by your performance. You, when you receive Jesus, you receive the gift of righteousness. Jesus just didn't die for you. He died as you. And he became your sin that you might become righteous as a gift. As soon as you accept Jesus, you are, you are approved. You are not guilty. You are well-pleasing to God. You instantly have his protection and his favor. 
If you want to receive this gift of eternal life with Jesus Christ, he becomes your high priest. The work's already done. He's already died on the cross for you. He's forgiven you of all of your sins, past, present, and future. As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to make him Lord today. It's, it, it's, you're not a robot. You have a, God made you with a free will. You, you have an opportunity, but you've got to, you've got to receive in order to get in on it. You got to all you got to do is say yes to Jesus. All the works have been done. So if you're ready to make Jesus Lord of your life today, if you're willing, just say this after me. Say, Dear God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead for me. And I receive Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord. Thank you, Father. It's you, my Father, and I have your protection, your deliverance, your forgiveness, your healing, your safety, your soundness, your righteousness. I am well-pleasing to you. I am accepted. I am approved. I am not guilty because of Jesus. All my sins have been forgiven past, present, and future. I'm a new creation in Christ. I have the life of God on the inside of me. Amen. Let's give God praise. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> you just got changed right now on the inside. You just got changed on the inside. You don't have to feel anything. You got changed. What now? What, what now? Okay, I prayed that. Now what? I want to encourage you to just, we'll be here next week. Just keep watching. Wherever you're watching now, come back and keep watching. Keep hearing the word. If you, if you made Jesus the Lord of your life today, one thing I would like for you to do is give us your email address, your first name. We Actually, we don't even even need your first name. All we need is your email address, but we'd like to call you by your name. And uh, you can give us your, your first name and email address. That'd be great. Just message us, and we will give, give you um, some information to help help you understand what happened to you when you just prayed that prayer and, and give you some material to help get your new life with the Lord off to a good start. If you're watching on our online platform, there's somebody in our chat area. If you click the live prayer button midway down your screen, you'll go into a live chat area and they'll take your information. Um, if you're watching on uh, our other platforms, just message us, please. Give us your email address um, and we will get this information to you. I encourage you to keep tuning in, um, watching us, and uh, so you can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it, it, it'll change you um, effortlessly. See, it's, it's not about, it's not really about giving, it's about receiving. Receiving the love that your Heavenly Father has for you. Nobody loves you like Jesus loves you. And when you receive his love, see, it's not about your love for God, but it's about his love for you. You don't have to earn his love, his, his acceptance. You'll never be any more accepted than you are right now. You'll never be any more loved or pleasing to God than you are right now because it's not based on your behavior. It's based on the cross and what Jesus did for you. One man's obedience on the cross made you righteous. You're righteous as a gift. Just enjoy, enjoy your life with the Lord. Talk to him. Tell him what's on your mind. You'll learn how to pray better as you, as you get into his word. And we want to help you with that. So just, keep, just keep, keep tuning in to this channel. If you need help, let us know. That, that you need help, you want, you want prayer, you want, just, just, just 
talk to us. We're, we're here for you. We want to minister to your needs. And um, to everybody that made Jesus Lord of your life, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. Again, just keep hearing this good news. It will change your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Well, we're going to... Um, that's it. Went, went long today, but some of y'all didn't tune in to 1030 anyway online. You <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't been here that long, so praise the Lord. Uh, we've been having long services online, but hey amen. We've got to make up for it because make up for you uh, going to the restroom and <laughs> babysitting and <laughs> cooking breakfast yeah. and all that kind of stuff. You know what y'all do. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Say, I am greatly blessed, highly favored, deeply loved, and totally righteous, and I'm destined to reign because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.